Welcome to the library, Wanderer. Our rules are three. Respect your fellow patrons. Do not damage the library. Return your books on time. You'll need a card to check out, of course. See the front desk for that. It should be just under a week's journey from here. You'll have to give the archivist your true name, but don't worry. We'll keep it under the strictest levels of security. Oh, and stay away from locked doors. There are places here where even we will not protect you. We would like to extend a special thanks to our associate producers, Dr. Theron Sherman, Sogapple, Adrian, Ethan Childers, Uncertainty Crossing, Angie Oriana, Cameron Schaus, Lisa Person, and Salem. What you are hearing is the result of their generous support. Now please, sit back and enjoy The Journal of Aphromos Long Journey. Sky Day, 25th cycle, 7th year, 81st turn, 92nd day in the trees. We continue to push through the forest. We have yet to return to the path. I have a new appreciation for paths and roads. Not only are they far easier to walk on, they show us which direction to go, or at least a direction to go. A path must lead somewhere or it would not be a path. We do not know where we are going. If I knew the stars of this place, I could navigate that way. But even when I can make them out between the branches, I can't see any of the constellations I am familiar with. I did not know it was possible to travel so far that the stars changed, but I appear to have managed it. Torn said that other travellers on the path have told him that any time they left the path, they still returned to it after a few days, which was comforting. Or it was, until he added, that those who never found the trail would not be met so sound and hale. Regardless, we have no choice but to keep moving. We will not find our way by standing still. If you are lost in the woods, it is normally best to stay in place so you can be found by rescuers. However, this assumes that rescuers are searching for you. Also, that you are not being hunted by something that wants to eat you, or worse, sell you magazines. We made our camp in a hollow formed by a fallen tree that was massive in life. Three Barrow could have laid head to foot on the stump and stretched out comfortably. A bend in the crooked log made a comfortable shelter. We have made no fire, and as the sun sets, it will soon be too dark to write any more. Rock Day, 25th cycle, 7th year, 81st turn, 93rd day in the trees. We have found the path, but we cannot reach it. After the sun went down last night, we heard movement through the woods near us. Several creatures or people were walking nearby. We huddled in the back of our shelter and stayed silent. Soon, something approached and began pulling at the brush and branches Torn had piled in front of the hollow. We could hear its ragged breath as it tested the barrier. I do not know why it made us so tense. We have encountered other predators before, other dangers. Perhaps it was only that we have been off the path but I could feel my scales turn dark with fear. After several minutes, there was a scream in the distance. The creature before us stopped and then let out a keening yell. It took off at a run as other cries answered it. Torn and I spent a sleepless night, huddled closely, trying to be as quiet as possible. The sun was up for several hours before we dared emerge. There were many tracks on the ground. The creatures had walked on two feet, 
and we could see that they had four toes on each leg. Neither of us spoke as we left the hollow. Part of me felt like a silly Conlin, frightened of shadows, and I felt a contrary urge to shout, to show I was not afraid. But another part of me remembered that strange keening, and I stayed silent. Torn determined they had continued in the direction we had been going. We turned to the left. Lost as we were, it was as good as any direction but back, and better by far, we felt, than meeting the makers of those tracks. We wished to travel with both haste and quiet, but we were poorly served for either. Dense undergrowth, old fallen branches and twigs, and startled birds conspired to slow us down and make noise. It was early afternoon when we heard that keening sound behind us. We looked at each other and broke into a run. Heedless of thorns and branches, we hurdled over fallen trees and rocks. We slowed only when the other lagged behind. It felt we had run for hours, but it was likely only moments when we broke the tree line into a clearing next to a river. Another time, I might have taken in the flowers in the field or stopped to look more closely at the river. But what drew my attention immediately was the wooden tower atop a rock base. These towers date back to the attempt by Emperor Orberg to expand the influence of the, poorly named, Eternal Empire of Thesk by patrolling trade routes outside his borders, ostensibly to dissuade bandits. Due to the unstable nature of the Ravelwoods and other less concrete realities, this turned into an impossible, wasteful exercise that ultimately bankrupted the Empire. The remaining towers turn up from time to time, serving as both a monument to poorly thought-out schemes and also as a handy shelter. The door to the tower was set above the ground, at about twice my height. Handhelds were carved into the rock leading up to it. I helped Torn up to the door, and he wrestled it open and disappeared within. I began to try climbing up myself, but the handhelds were too small for me, and I fell back to the ground. I stole a glance back and saw white shapes moving through the underbrush. I realised I was looking at white bone. As the first broke through the trees, I could make out the hollow eyes of a predator's skull. At the same time, something fell on my shoulder, and I shouted with fear before I realised it was a rope. Quick! Torn yelled. It's tied off! I scrambled up. A thin hand gripped my ankle, but fell back as I kicked against the bone. Then I was in, and Torn closed the door. There were scratching sounds at the walls below us, but we seemed to be safe. The room was largely bare, with only a few small chairs and a table. Narrow windows had shutters closed tightly over them. A set of stairs led up to the next story. We wrestled the table in front of the door and put the tables leaned against it for good measure. Then, with a space to breathe, we opened a window and looked down below. The white bone creatures were prowling around the base of the tower. They were not simple skeletons. Rather, each seems to be a collection of bones from many different skeletons. They walk on two legs, keeping their arms held close to their bodies. Tails of ribs and vertebrae stretch out behind them. Each has a different skull than the others. Some predators like wolves or cats some prey animals, like camels or wild sheep. One skull, Torn tells me, looks much like his wood, were he not using it. The river flows swiftly, breaking white over the rocks. Occasionally, bright silver fish jump out against the current. Possibly Strupenth's perpetual salmon, a species that continually seeks its spawning grounds but never quite makes it there. On the other side of the river, there is the path, as open and inviting as we might ever have wished. A bow could hit it easily with an arrow, but we cannot reach it without dealing with the creatures below and then swimming across the river. And so, we are currently trapped. 
The creatures cannot seem to climb, but we dare not leave the tower while they are there. Sadly, this is where the volume ends. Perhaps it was here, away from the path, that Aphromos met her demise to some savage specimen of the Ravelwoods. Or perhaps, given the fortitude and sheer size of the Barrow Nomads, she simply misplaced her journal or ran out of ink. I would like to imagine the latter is the case, and that she completed her journey and redeemed her family's standing with the tribe. Regardless, what remains of Aphromos' long journey is a priceless chronicle of her travels that adds to the richness and deep history that we know and challenges some of our most common presumptions of the Ravelwoods. I can only hope that more of her journals will surface. Perhaps you, dear reader, have knowledge of such volumes. Avos Tor, Scholar of the Rev Library Thank you for listening. The Journal of Aphromos Long Journey is written by Dr. Everett Mann. You can browse Dr. Mann's articles and the other works of the library at wanderers-library.wikidot.com. This production is possible in large part because of our sponsors. John Beatty, Yesenia, Crowcat, Rounder House, Lan2D, and John Winfield. Check the description to find out how to support this channel and future projects like this. This production and content relating to the Wanderers Library is licensed under Creative Commons Sharealike 3.0 and all concepts originate from the Wanderers Library wiki and its authors. This recording, being derived from this content, is hereby also released under Creative Commons Sharealike 3.0.